We live in one of the most beautiful beach towns in Australia, but I do feel like my work pace as a working mom really hasn't changed that much from when I was living in like the busiest city in the world, Bangkok. And you know, I really love short dinner hacks like the butter chicken and the pho, but there are some times when I'm just really in the mood for like a full roast dinner with all the bits. So I've devised a way to have my chicken and eat it too. Just look at this roast chicken, the color, the crispy skin, and we're doing bacon fat potatoes, the creamiest pan gravy, and it's all possible within an hour of getting home from work. If you wanna be doing a really great, and I mean really good roast chicken, but you wanna do it quickly, you need to know about this technique. Now that requires you to get in here and get a bit dirty. I'm just using scissors here and cutting through the side, so just to the side of the backbone here. Basically what I'm doing here is spatchcocking the chicken. So that means I'm flattening out the chicken so it will cook quicker and more evenly in the oven. Okay, so that's like the gory bit out of the way. Just pull this backbone out. That's good. I've got the kind of even quick cooking going now with the way I've prepared the chicken. Now I wanna get the right kind of texture on my skin and I love a crispy chicken skin. So what I'm gonna do here is salt this quite generously. Then this next tip might surprise you, but I have worked a long time on perfecting my roast chicken technique. And I actually have a test kitchen episode where I run through the full gamut of ways that you can crisp up chicken skin, oil, butter, all sorts of different things. And I found that the winner was mayonnaise. So just brush your chicken with the mayonnaise. What it does is it makes the skin beautifully brown and crisp and lovely and you don't even notice the mayonnaise flavor later on, trust me. When it comes to roasting, there's a couple of things here. So first of all, I like to sit my chicken on either some herbs or some onion or a little bit of both, just so it's sort of sitting off the bottom of the pan and getting some nice air circulation around. So I'm gonna grab myself an onion as well. And you don't have to be too, you know, precise about this. I'm just gonna cut the onion, skin and all, put it down on the bottom here. I also love that the onion and herb trivet, if you like, uh, is actually going to flavor sort of the base of that pan as well. So when we go to make our gravy, we'll have this lovely extra bit of fragrance and flavor. So my chicken now goes on top. And we're ready for the oven. So I've got my oven well up, like really hot, 240 Celsius. This is gonna go in for about 50 minutes to an hour or until it's cooked through. While your chicken is roasting, you have ample time to make sides uh, or not. You know, I'm not against a store-bought salad, particularly when you know, you're know you in the mood to be relaxing and not cooking. But I am gonna show you my favorite roast potatoes, which I do often do with this chicken. And it starts off just with the whole potatoes just going in here. I'm gonna cook some baby potatoes, about a kilo, in boiling water for around about 20 minutes or until they're just tender when you pierce them with a knife. Now I mentioned bacon fat before and what I have at home is a stash of bacon fat actually. Whenever I'm cooking bacon for the kids, I will save the fat in a nice little neat container. But I don't have that here at the studio, so I'm gonna make my own bacon fat. Just dice up some bacon and added bonus, some little bacon crumbs on our roast potatoes. It's not a bad thing. To get the maximum amount of bacon fat, I typically start the bacon in a cold pan and then gently heat the pan so that there's enough time for the fat to kind of render out of the bacon and give up all of its goodness before the actual meaty part of the bacon gets too crisp or burnt. So that's the idea here. 
just let the bacon cook now. It's going to take maybe 10 to 15 minutes here, but just come back and tend to it every so often. Give it a stir and I'll show you what that rendered bacon fat looks like and what to do with it. What are you watching? What have you got? Whoa. It's a new one, is it? Charlie. Charlie, come on, I gotta keep I gotta keep filming, I gotta make some potatoes. Hi darling. Love you. Love you. Bring some home for me. Okay, I'll bring some home for you. Oh yeah, it's nice, isn't it? That's so nice. Bye. Bye. Bye, honey. Now I have to take potatoes home for Charlie. Ah, oh, the smell of bacon. That makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> it really is a very easy thing to do, you know, I've just come back and sort of tossed it around every now and then and it's been about 10 or 12 minutes and you can see we've got lots of that lovely bacon fat there in the bottom. Now because I do kind of like save up my bacon fat at home, um, I do like to add a little bit of pork lard into this mix as well. But first of all, I'll just get my crispy bacon bits out, leaving the fat behind. So there's the bacon, I'll leave that aside for later. And here is the lard I was talking about. So you find it in the butter section of your supermarket typically. This is a pork lard. And I'm gonna keep all of that lovely sort of browning, bacony kind of goodness in there as well. Just gonna add in some of this extra. That. Okay, so that's just going to sit there until my potatoes are ready and then we're going to come back and mix and crush the potatoes in all of that glorious flavour. These potatoes are looking good. Pop my knife in here. Yep, you can feel that they're nice and soft through the centre. It's going to drain them. And I like to put the potatoes back into the warm pot just to kind of get them drying out a little bit. I might even put the heat on a bit as well. Because of course, moisture is your enemy when you're trying to get things nice and crunchy and crispy. So I just want those to dry out a little bit. Okay, and now we are all about bacon fat and the lard and the potatoes making friends. So first of all I want to heat this up so it's really very very hot like scary hot a little scary. So I don't know if you can quite see it on camera but there is like a little bit of like a smoky haze going on here that's what I meant by a little bit scary hot. Now because things are so hot be careful when you put your potatoes in another reason to dry out your potatoes as well before they go in because you don't want that sort of like water hit, hitting hot oil kind of splash going on. We're looking good here. Now take a potato masher and just gently crush those potatoes. I don't want like a full mash here. I'm just going for like a light crush. There we go. Sprinkle with salt. My potatoes are sizzling away. I'm gonna get my chicken out because that is now ready. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Look at that guy. Oh, I get so excited about these things. <laughs> so this is what I'm talking about with that mayonnaise, right? Like, look at that color. It's just beautifully burnished and mahogany and oh, and the, and the skin, like you can't hear it because that is sizzling so much, but it is so crisp. Good sound. Oh, such a great way to do chicken. Now I like to let the chicken rest before I carve into it and that'll give me time to do the gravy. So if you come down and have a look in the pan, I have some lovely juices going on, a little bit of caramelised onion. I'm going to use all of that to make my gravy. But before I do that, these potatoes are calling my name because I can smell that they're getting crispy and toasty. And oh, look at that colour. So good. Yum. That is the colour of a crispy potato. <laughs> Mm. 
They can just sit off to the side now. They'll keep crisping up on the bottom. And let's do our gravy. So first of all, I'm just gonna keep the excess pan juices, some of that onion, just to the side here. Now again, this is an optional extra. So if I'm in a can't be bothered mood, I will just carve the chicken and spoon those pan juices over the top. But if you did wanna to go to just a little bit of extra trouble, this is a very nice and easy gravy to make. So my butter goes into the pan. Add the butter and wait for it to start foaming and melting. Whisk in the Chinese five spice and the flour. Cook and whisk this mixture for about three or four minutes and then slowly whisk in your chicken stock. So I'm going to whisk in my chicken stock now. Keep whisking until it's beautifully smooth. Allow it to simmer for two or three minutes to thicken slightly. And then we're just going to add a touch of soy sauce here for some extra flavour. Add the pan juices back in. And now look at that. I mean, in a matter of minutes, not very much trouble at all. We have this really lovely, thick, luscious gravy. Oh, oh God, that tastes good. <laughs> just give me that and the potatoes and I'd be happy. Okay, let's just get all of this together now, shall we? So there you go, friends, the roast chicken dinner that I make on repeat at home. I love sharing these things with you guys. And well, because it looks so delish, I'm getting in here and I'm gonna eat some because it just looks too good. Some chicken, I want some potato. Oh, gravy, oh, look at that. I am a fiend for gravy. gravy. Mm. So good. Ah, my little heart is singing for joy. Yum. And so easy. Definitely achievable any night of the week, even after a busy work day. <laughs>